Hello, my dear students and friends. I'm Dr. Uru Silias. I'm professor in Department of Wildlife Sciences, Amy Oligar. My team members, Dr. Sharat Kumar, Dr. Kaleem Ahmad, Dr. Ahmad Masood Khan, will be delivering the online lectures for the environmental studies, the course we have proposed for online. While Dr. Iqbal Imam, he, will, he is a TA in Department of Wildlife Sciences, will be helping us in content writing. So the main purpose of uh, to propose this course that environmental studies, it is a multidisciplinary academic field which systematically studies human interaction with the environment. In 1991, Honorable Supreme Court of India mandated this course, this uh, um, environmental education as a compulsory, compulsory subject in level of Indian education, all level of Indian education. The court also directed the University Grant Commission, that, that is UGC, to prescribe a course on the environment as a mandatory subject in college of undergraduate undergrad students. The December 2003, the last year, very last year, court order requires that green curricula be taught in all India's 28 states. So this is a mandatory course for all the universities all the undergraduate students of different universities, whether it's a college or the university. And it is very important course to, to create the awareness among the masses, to develop the belonging um, with the environment, develop the belonging of the student with the environment. So this is a very, very important course. And the green curricula or the green education aims to help students learn about the environment, environmental protection, biodiversity conservation and climate change. It also helps students develop a skill to address the 21st century challenges of climate change, social inequities and unsustainable lifestyle. Green curricula can include resources to help students learn about the general renewable energy and recycling. Keeping all these things in mind, we have proposed the environmental studies course and this course is for 12 weeks. And the lecture has been organized in a very, very systematic way to starting with the environmental environment, its multidimensional nature to the, um, to the uh, sustainable development. So uh, this course, this 12 week course, you all are welcome in the 12 week course. So this course will be starting with the environment and its multidimensional nature during the first week of the course, component of environment. Under this, we will be discussing about the lithosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere and biosphere. Hydrosphere means the water, the lithosphere means the earth and atmosphere where the, all the gas, gases uh, are available and the biosphere, the holistic approach. After developing the understanding about the components of the environment, during second and third week, we will be exploring about the renewable and the non-renewable na natural resources. Renewable and non-renewable natural resources are those, renewable are those which can be recreated like forest while the uh, non-renewable which can once finish we cannot, re we cannot recreate that is the fossil fuel. So we'll be discussing about the renewable and non-renewable natural resources which includes food, water, forest, land, energy and minerals. We are very, very rich in minerals. Minerals are the backbone of any country. If you have, that is why the United States of America, they have the large chunk of minerals, underground minerals, and they are in, into the mining. And that is why they are very, very rich. So minerals are the backbone of any country, economic backbone of any country. That is the backbone of the industries. This renewable and the non-renewable resources, we'll be discussing about the biogeochemical cycles. Biogeochemical cycles are important to understand the exchange of the gases in the environment. And that we will be discussing during the fourth week. Under this, we will be covering carbon, oxygen, sulfur, phosphorus, nitrogen cycles. After this, after completing four week course, four weeks, we'll be moving towards the fifth week. And during the fifth, fifth week, we will be discussing about the concept of ecosystem, which will be including biotic component and type of ecosystem. This will be continuing during six weeks along with food chain, food web, biodiversity, the types of biodiversity, and genetic and the species diversity. This is all we will be discussing during the 
week fifth. Six weeks is about the food chain, food web, biodiversity, its types, genetic and species diversity. Week seven and eight, we'll, we will be discussing about the ecosystem diversity and India as a mega biodiversity country. We will be discussing about 34 biodiversity, world biodiversity hotspots, which include four biodiversity hotspots of India. What are the threats to these biodiversity hotspots and what is the threat to the biodiversity? We will also be discussing about the biodiversity impact assessment. We have heard a lot about the environmental impact assessment. Somehow we are missing the biodiversity impact assessment. So this is was was this is what we are going to cover under the seventh and eighth week: the biodiversity impact assessment and biodiversity conservation and the food security. Food security to ensure the food to ensure the food to each and every individual of the nation. We have to work for the food security, means more and more grains. So we will be linking the biodiversity conservation and the food security. That we will be covering during the 7th and 8th week. And after that, we have, after completing the 8th week, we have 9th week. And then week 9, we will be discussing about the in situ and ex situ conservation. When we are talking about the biodiversity, biodiversity threats, then after this, we have to come to the biodiversity conservation. What all we can do for the conservation of the biodiversity? This is what we are going to discuss during the week 9. There are two kinds of bi biodiversity conservation. One is the in situ conservation and that is the ex situ conservation. In situ conservation means declaring any area as a protected area like national park, sanctuary, community reserve and conservation reserve. These all we will be discussing on, in week 9. Along with this, ex situ conservation means the species which is not protected in, in its natural habitat. We try to create the same habitat in captivity and bring the species to that habitat. When the population increases, we release that species in the natural habitat. So there is a long process. So two kind of uh, conservation, biodiversity conservation we will be discussing. Along with this, we will be discussing about the centrally sponsored scheme. There are, we have heard uh, heard a lot about the tiger project, tiger project, elephant project, rhino. So these all schemes are, are the centrally sponsored scheme and these species are being focused because their population has decreased. They have lost their habitat. The threat of poaching is too much for these species. These are the big charismatic species. So the government of India has initiated uh, some program like uh, project tiger, uh, project elephant, uh, project rhino, and there are certain captive breeding programs also. So, uh, con biodiversity conservation through in situ and ex situ conservation. And then we will be discussing about the endangered species management and global warming and climate change. Climate is being changed, is changing. Extinction is a normal process. It is a very, very natural process. But this time we have already seen fifth, five phases of the extinction. We have already seen, have taken place. But this is the sixth phase of the mass extinction. The only difference is that this time the extinction process has speed up because of the global warming, the rise in temperature. And because of that, the climate is being changing. We are getting the uncertain rains, uncertain um, environment, climatic condition is uncertain. So natural calamities are very, very frequent just because of the climate change. So this all we'll be discussing during the week nine. During uh, week 10, we will be discussing about the pollution and different type of pollution, including environmental degradation. We are seeing the pollution. We are witnessing the pollution, all the metropolitan cities. If you go to Delhi during the Deepavali, the Delhi, Delhi is full of the smog. So much of the pollution that Every house, most of the houses ha have got the air purifier, oxygen and those who are having the asthmatic problem, they are surviving on the oxygen. So these are the issues we are facing in Delhi, being in Delhi, we are facing all these issues in Delhi. So pollution, air pollution, water pollution, environment pollution, these are the major concern and we have to discuss and that is what we will be discussing during the week 10. Along with this, 
because of the pollution what degradation what the what environmental degradation are going on that we'll be discussing during week 10 the last two weeks are very important because this includes the human being. We are in the center. We will be talking about the sustainable development. So the last two weeks, that is 11th and 12th, we'll be discussing about the role of government and the non-government agencies for environmental conservation. What actually government is doing? What all the policies government are making? So this is all we will be discussing in uh, during the 11th and the 12th week. So there are government agencies, there are non-government agencies, they are working for the, for the improvement of the forest, for the improvement of the environment. Like they have different policies, different acts, uh, they, have, they, they can penalize for, uh, for, uh, for different kind of activities which is not desirable. So uh, 11th and 12th week will include the environmental acts, different acts policies along with this the way to achieve sustainable development and mission life at the end this course will give you the valuable insight into the interconnection between various ecosystem human activities and the planet earth with this knowledge the students can be more empowered to take a small but meaningful action to protect and preserve the environment. So this was the course structure and this course structure we will be covering in 12 weeks with my team, Dr. Sharad, he is the co-coordinator, Dr. Kaleem, Dr. Masood and Dr. Iqbal Imam. So we will, we, we, we all will be making, we, we all will be giving our 100 percent to convey the message which Supreme Court wanted to convey the message to the masses, to the students, to the youth through this course. So thank you very much and welcome uh, in the 12-week course of the environmental study. Thank you.